All right, we now consider the uh, solo model with only capital accumulation. Uh, let, let us still start with capital K and labor L, which uh, produce an output Y, but as you're going to see, we uh, will get rid of uh, L very quickly. Um, so we can uh, write it in a very simple way. So Y output is equal to function of my two uh, factors of production, k and l. Um, so uh, for now, we can. Uh, we, what we want to do is to assume that l is fixed, uh, so that that way we can just uh, not have to think about it. So let's just assume that l uh, equals one, since I can choose any value I want. And also imagine that the rest of the economy is also fixed. So land is fixed, technology is fixed, nothing changes. Uh, why do we, do we start with this? Well, because it's perfectly fine. It's enough to uh, to look at uh, most of what's interesting in the solo model, and then we can act, add complexity once we understand the basics. Uh, so let's uh, let us write it this way. So y equals f of k one. And I can even abuse the notation more by just writing it is equal to f of k. So where has the l gone? Well, the l is still there. So I, maybe I shouldn't write uh, use the exact same letter for uh, for f. But so uh, if we cons uh, if we uh, allow for this abuse of notation, so we we have to to simply remember that the l is still there. But since it doesn't change, I don't have to care for it. Uh, now capital uh, has the its usual pr uh, properties in terms of production, so it has decreasing marginal productivity. Uh, what does that mean? Well, first of all, if I have some positive amount of capital, I should be able to produce some positive amount of production. So f of k is greater than zero for k greater than zero. Then uh, what happens if I increase the uh, amount of capital by some positive quantity? Well, uh, I should be able to produce more or some quantity more. So uh, I write T F of K DK is also positive. But there are decreasing returns. So what does that mean? It means if I have, say, a very large amount of capital, then at some point it doesn't give me all that much. If you give me even more capital, it's not, I can't exploit it very well. So uh, its impact on uh, output is even more than before. So how do I write it? D square f of k. D is zero or the second der derivative of f of k uh, with respect to k is uh, smaller than zero. So that's uh, that's that. These are our basic properties for f. Uh, so if, if you want to wa uh, want some example in mind, so what we can think about, uh, Cobb Douglas would be fine. Uh, so here, since we have only one variable, so let's just see it's. Uh, f of k is square root of k, for instance. So example, I could write f of k equals square root of k. And uh, then I can verify that uh, my, my choice uh, indeed works with the assumptions I have. So if you remember how you derive, so df of k dk equals 1 over 2 root k, which is indeed positive for any positive uh, value of capital. We don't uh, we uh, don't consider negative values of capital, of course, because uh, it's only a positive quantity. And then uh, second derivative. So I again derive this expression a second time. 
So what do I get? I get then, since k is at the bottom, then I'm going to get some negative amount. So minus 1 over 4 multiplied by 1 over k to the 3 halves. Uh, oops, 3 halves. And this is indeed smaller than 0. All right. So uh, this is a, a, a basic uh, function that would uh, would be valid for that. If you, so keep that in mind uh, if you're confused. Uh, so now let me uh, add some uh, extra assumptions. So these assumptions are called inada uh, conditions. Uh, th uh, they are uh, they are necessary if I want the model to be well behaved, and by that I mean to have uh, one, uh, to be sure to have one equilibrium, and uh, that this equilibrium is unique. So for now, it's abstract. You don't really know what I'm talking about. But uh, once we see how, what happens uh, graphically, uh, everything is going to be very clear. Uh, so first assumption is no capital, no uh, production. So in a way, if I uh, had no capital, maybe I could build some things with my uh, my own hands. Uh, I, I, I have some ability. But here, uh, we're going to use this uh, simplifying assumption. Uh, so uh, I can write it very simply. f of 0 equals 0. All right. And now the maybe tricky assumption is we're going to say that the first unit of capital is infinitely productive or is a, has an arbitrary large uh, marginal productivity. Uh, so this, uh, again, is, uh, is going to make sense uh, down the road. So how do, uh, now just uh, take my word for it. Uh, so how do I write this? I write, so I'm going to uh, use limits. So the limit uh, when k um, tends towards zero of the f of k dk equals infinity. Um, all right, so this is my second inada condition. And then the second one, uh, the, the third one will be actually the reverse of the second one. So, uh, and this one is, uh, is makes a lot of, of uh, intuitive sense. So if I have an infinite amount of capital, then one extra unit doesn't give me anything in terms of production. So the uh, marginal productivity of capital uh, towards uh, when capital tends to infinity is zero. So I can just rewrite this the same way and re replace. Here. So the limit when k tends to towards infinity of df of k dk equals to zero. And uh, we can verify that these uh, assumptions are uh, verified for our uh, choice of uh, function. So uh, if I look at the first derivative, so df of k dk equals 1 over 2 square root of k. So what happens when k tends towards 0? Then this tends towards uh, infinity. So I can't uh, express this if k equals exactly 0, but, uh, but towards 0, it makes sense. And if k tends towards infinity, then I get 1 over infinity. So I get uh, df of k dk equals 0. So this is uh, valid for the uh, third inada condition as well. Um, all right. Uh, so this is uh, everything I have to know about uh, f for now. Uh, now what I uh, want to know is how do I accumulate or lose capital? So as we have said, we have some ways to, uh, to gain capital by investment and we lose capital uh, over time uh, due to depreciation. Uh, so uh, this depreciation rate is uh, exogenous, it's going to be delta. Delta is a fixed a fraction of capital that I lose every period. So then the total capital loss is what? Is simply delta multiplied by the capital I have. Here I uh, haven't introduced any uh, time period yet, so we don't know what this is, if it's uh, one second or one year. It's just a fraction of capital. 
And what can I do to mitigate this loss of capital where well, I can uh, is invest in more capital? And to invest, I need to save some of my output. So here the savings rate is some fraction S that's uh, between zero and one. Agents can save this uh, fraction of their income and reinvest it. So what is total investment? Total is investment is going to be uh, written I equals to the fraction of uh, production saved S multiplied by the total production. And I can already substitute F, so I can write S times F of K. So this is invest investment. Now, question for you, think about it for a while. Uh, what is consumption? All right, here's the answer. Well, consumption is whatever is left after I have invested. So if I go back to the example of potato plants, then I invest some potatoes by planting them and the rest I can keep and eat for myself. So I could write consumption I will write it C equals Y, what I produce, minus what I invest, S of Y. And in terms of, I can also write 1 minus S times F of Q. All right, so this is nice because we have everything written as function of K and we're going to be able to uh, not really care too much about these capital letters. All the models will, uh, will be well expressed in terms of key. So this is uh, the capital accumulation and loss. Now, uh, I haven't said a word about uh, the dynamics, but this is a dynamic model. This is all we care about. So we can introduce time in uh, typically in two ways, either as a a discrete uh, way or uh, in a con continuous way. Here we start with a discrete way, which makes intuitive sense. However, uh, once you get experts, uh, you see that uh, dealing with continuous time is uh, can be simpler in terms of the math, but they are mostly similar. So here, let's let us introduce time. Uh, so we're going to see that time is just some. Uh, some value t, uh, which can have value 1, 2, and 3. So I'm not saying uh, whether this is uh, some years, for instance, uh, or uh, or months, but yeah, years uh, makes sense. It depends on uh, what data you have. And uh, when you do have to uh, work with data, then, uh, then you will have to be careful about making sure that your uh, units of time are always the same in each of your data sources. And uh, finally, we can uh, uh, talk about the growth rate of capital. Uh, this we call the law of motion. So it's uh, the uh, rate at which capital will change. And then what is it? Well, we already know that there are two ways to change capital by is investment and uh, we by uh, losing capital through depreciation. So how do we write this? Well, it's uh, very simple. Uh, so um, again, we're going to express capital in a discrete way. So uh, what we write is the following. So uh, the change in capital from one period to the next can be expressed as k t plus one minus k t. Oops. And we're going to use a great letter for that. We're going to define this as, well, I, could, I could write, since we define it, capital delta kt. So this is the definition of kt plus one minus kt. And it's equal to investment minus depreciation. So s y of t minus delta right uh, and yeah, I can even uh, 
replace y of t, so s f of k t. Um, yeah, uh, so this is how much capital will be will change uh, from one period to the next. And uh, so one note is if I was dealing with continuous time, then in, instead of having capital delta k uh, t, I would simply uh, consider the der time derivative, so d k t d t, for a very small uh, uh, amount of change of uh, over time. So it's like if I always look at how, how much capital do I have, and we uh, write this as k dot t. Now, final uh, concept to understand is what we call state variables. So here, k is going to be a state variable. What, what are uh, these variables? Well, they are a set of variables that contain all the information that we need to describe completely a system. Here, the system is the economy and to know everything uh, about its future evolution. Uh, so here, since there is only actually one uh, variable that uh, really uh, describes some stock, which is capital, then once I know it, I know everything I have to know. So this is uh, the mathematical expression of the model. Now we're going to see, uh, see it expressed in terms of graph and everything is going to make sense.